In late January 2020, as researchers began to assess the threat posed by COVID-19, the CDC released this illustration of the SARS-CoV-2 virus particle. It would quickly become the public face of a global menace, a visual touchstone appearing in public health warnings and media stories about all aspects of the pandemic. But even as that image became iconic, artists and scientific illustrators continued to create new images and animations based on the emerging data. There was actually quite a lot of information about it. There were really, really nice electron microscopy stuff. There were a number of structures available for the individual proteins. Yeah, it can be heavy lifting. <laughs> Structural biologists are always interested in a lot more detail than, than we need as science communicators. New data about the virus particle's shape, the geometry of its enclosed RNA, and the scattering of surface proteins led to updates on the mechanisms of transmission and infection. And so early on, Goodsell realized his original concepts would need some revision, as seen in these images from early 2020. The, the new one has uh, fewer spikes, so it doesn't have quite as much of a corona crown shape as the, the earlier one. And the spikes are quite bendy. I guess that has important implications in how it interacts with both the receptors and uh, antibodies interact with it, that bendiness. Goodsell even offered up an illustration that served to educate children. Parents that were sitting down with their kids and using the coloring exercise to talk about viruses and, uh, you know, that they're real objects that we can fight, uh, that kind of thing, trying to just make it a little bit realer instead of this vague, <laughs> unknown danger. Such images offered a way to communicate complicated information to a concerned public. In the wake of the Omicron surge, visuals have also offered a way to show the public and researchers the distinctive characteristics of a worrisome variant. In this Omicron animation, made for PNAS front matter, structural biologist and animator Gloria Fuentes shows how she made artistic choices informed by the science. So the whole idea is you have the structure of the spike protein. In, uh, the, the first opening thing is, is that. And uh, then it's like it starts zooming in to different binding partners. So the first one will be AC2, which is a receptor in the human cells. So you clearly see that there are some residues that they are mutated in Omicron. Fuentes colored the residues mutated in Omicron, gray. Those that are relevant for particular interactions, she colored red. To explain further how the virus coaxes its way into cells, Fuentes illustrated antibodies and how they bind. So if this antibody binds the spike, obviously it cannot bind the receptor in the cell, so it will not infect our cells. So it's like you see that there are the antibodies targeting different regions of the spike. And for every of these region, regions, there are mutations in Omicron. It might indicate why it's escaping the antibodies that we have in our bodies. So there are many people that they are getting infected even though they are vaccinated. This could be a reason. New variants will likely emerge as the virus continues to evolve. Illustrators, informed by the data and working with scientists, will try to evolve along with them. Mm -hmm.